catch you with yet another DJ's Brew Tube beer review. You know what time it is, guys. It's time to go loco. That's right. We're going to have another beer from our buddies down in Salisbury, Maryland at Evolution Craft Brewing. Mm-mm. Loving me some Evolution Craft Brewing beer. Um, every beer that I've had from them has been at least an above average beer. Good quality ingredients. I'm liking them. You know I geek out on the number three. I geek out on their Lucky 7 Porter. Going crazy on that stuff. And what do we got tonight? We got their seasonal. We got their Jacques O Lantern. And before we even get started, small brewery, guys. Don't get me wrong. Little brewery, Salisbury, Maryland, eastern shore of the state. Oh, what's this on the side? They've got date notchy. Hey, bigger macro brewers and bigger micro and nano brewers or whatever the hell you're calling yourself nowadays, do it. You can put a date on. These guys are not big. You can put a date on your bottle, too. I'll get off the soapbox now and stop my sermon, guys. But anyways, what do we got here? We got pumpkin beer. I know, I know. I said I couldn't drink any more pumpkin beer, but I bought it somewhere along the way. You guys know how it is. You go to the bottle shop, you see something on the shelf. Oh, man, I'm going to have that. Oh, I'm going to have that. And you grab them, and you start stacking them in that six-pack, and you end up with these stray beers that you find as we're doing the reclamation on our collection. So, like I said, this is a seasonal offering, 6.3% alcohol by volume, and from the best I can tell, it's like about 20 IBUs, which is what most pumpkin beers are. All right, so, they got five malts in this, they got a couple kinds of hops, and they've got cinnamon, ginger, allspice, honey, clove, whole mess of pumpkin pie stuff going on here, and they've got the pumpkin in here. So. As you know, you've seen me review a ton of pumpkin beers. Let's see what comes out of this. Is this going to be a spice bomb? Or is it going to actually taste like pumpkin and a whole slice of pumpkin pie and all that with some napkins? Like we're talking about with our buddy Pumpkin and Schlafly uh, Pumpkin Ale. So let's get this popped. Boom. One shot does it. Got our nice, lovely Evolution Crown. A lot of smoke coming off the top of this bottle. And... I'm right thirsty tonight, guys. I gotta tell you, I'm gonna have to fight myself not to chug this bad boy because we got the workout on a little bit earlier today, and I don't know if I can let this warm up like I'm gonna have to, but I will take one for the team and be a professional beer reviewer tonight. Hmm? Yeah, maybe. Anyways, I'll shut my hole. Sorry. Anyway, yeah, get this in the glass. Oh, it looks like a pumpkin beer. <laughs> You know, it's not easy to drink more pumpkin beer. It's so Johnny and I reviewed so many pumpkin beers this year. <sighs> to drink another pumpkin beer is not easy. Um, the last one I did, I think, was the Fear, and that one was pretty good. But anyway, not to digress too much. So, a little bit hazy. It's not chill haze. It's not super perfectly clear, crystal glass clear, but I can see my hand through the other side. And there's just a really slight, slight haze to the beer, almost none at all. Um, settle down really fast to uh, one finger head of really tight khaki bubbles. It's that deep orangey sort of fall sunset amber color. Copper almost, yeah, like deep copper, guys. Um, really nice looking beer. If I swirl it, we could add get good agitation. There is some alcohol legs. It's 6.3%. It's not a big boy yet. It's still, for some of us in that session range, you know, 5.5 to maybe 6.5% is really still session range. <clears throat> so you go much above, you know, this, uh, you know, 6.5%, then you're getting into stronger brews, but really nice looking beer. Um, nothing, nothing knocking in that part, plus we got the date on the bottle. We're going good. <sighs> Do I dare smell it? Here we go. Into another pumpkin beer, guys. <sighs> wow. That is clove forward. Damn. Clove, cinnamon, Ginger, man, they did not spare the spices on this. Allspice, big time hard allspice. But clove, the level of, if you've had like a Virginia ham before, guys, maybe, or a Southern style ham, where they take the ham and they put the pineapple on the outside of it, before they put it in like your Weber kettle or they roast it in the oven, and they stick those cloves into that, um, into those slices of pineapple, and while it cooks, man, that, that, that clove just like embeds itself into that outside like sweet crust and salty crust that forms on the outside of that ham. That's what this beer smells like. So I like clove. If you don't like clove, you might be turned off. So I wonder how much this is going to follow in the taste because we've had other spice bombs that smelled like cinnamon and then they jack you up with nutmeg. So let's see. Clove, sweet malt. I'm getting some of that buttery pumpkin gourd sort of smell in the background. 
and some cinnamon and honey action going, and I think there is some honey maybe in this beer. I can't, I can't remember. So many pumpkin beers, guys. Forget about it. Let's get a taste on this. I'm thirsty. Wow. Holy clove attack. A lot of spices in this. It's still quite cold. I do get a little bit of the buttery pumpkin taste sort of in my mouth. But at this temperature, and we're about mm, 40 degrees, I think, on this beer. At this temperature, it's a clove punch in the face. And I'm definitely going to need to let this one warm up a little bit. There's a, there's a lot going on with this beer. It does seem, for where my palate is right now, tasting this beer, does seem to have some potential, but I want to let it warm up a little bit and give you a proper assessment. Be right back. Hey guys, I'm back. And first and foremost, let me let you know, I looked at the bottom corner of the bottle here and I forgot that Evolution Craft Brewing does really good labeling the stuff on their bottles, and it actually says 20 IBU in the bottom. So my guess was actually correct. So when I took my notes, I wrote down, I think, about 20 IBUs, because that's where a lot of these pumpkin beers come in. I drank most of this one down, and as it warms up, the pumpkin flavor does enhance, and then pumpkin, to me, you pick up when they put a lot of it in there as sort of a butteriness or a pumpkin taste. And I say butteriness or maybe like creaminess kind of like when you eat that pumpkin pie filling, that gratification of the gourd that you're thinking of. Now, this beer, as spices go, seems like most of these pumpkin beers to me, in my humble opinion, most of them have a dominant spice that just beats your palate up. And this one's dominant spice is clove and then followed closely by allspice, then cinnamon, then honey. It's not a bad beer, don't get me wrong, I'm just letting you know the order of flavors that I found and I was able to pick out in this beer as I was drinking it down. And I would say that to me, for my palate, I like clove. If you don't like clove, you might not like this beer. So, that said, you know, hmm, the haziness on this beer, I did a little more research while we were going before we get into the grades. Um, this is unfiltered beer, so that's where the haze comes from. And as I got to the bottom, I did swirl a little bit. There wasn't any sediment or anything that came out of the bottle. It's just unfiltered, which is fine. I really dig unfiltered beer. Um, so, that said, Rape Beer is giving this a 78. It's way better than a 78. And Beer Abbey is going to give it an 85. And I'm going to go with that grade, too, which is about a B plus. Um, it's a good beer with the caveat that you have to know if you don't like the flight taste of clove, and all spice, which are aggressive, spicier pumpkin spices, you may not like this beer. Or you might and say, wow, I like clove now. So, I'm giving it the B plus, guys, 85. Um, you know what? Remember what I say, guys. You gotta think globally. You gotta drink locally. You gotta support the craft beer movement. Keep these small breweries pumping out good beers like this with great labeling, awesome dating on the bottle. Mm -hmm. That's one of the reasons they're getting a B plus too. Dates on the bottle, all the info's on there. I know what I'm getting into before, at least as much as I can, before I buy this beer. Mm -hmm. Let's support that craft beer movement, guys. Keep this stuff growing. Thanks a million for watching. If there's something you want me to review, let me know. I'll do my best to do it if I can find it. Can't get everything here, but I will do what I can. And until the next time, what is it? Oh, that's right. It's a big piece of ass.